Hello everyone, and welcome back to Fun with Flags in History. I'm your host Frank, and today we're doing a short recap on the life and rule of Haiti's authoritarian voodoo dictator, Francois Papadoc Duvalier. I know that previously I covered this topic a couple of years ago, however, I feel that in preparation for part two, discussing the life and rule of his son, Baby Doc, I feel it would be necessary to cover at least some most important aspects of his father's rule. So today, we'll be recapping and unraveling the enigmatic life of Francois Duvalier. In this extensive exploration, we will traverse the trajectory of Duvalier's rise to power, his consolidation of authority, the socio-political landscape of Haiti under his rule, and the enduring legacy that he left behind. But before we go into this video, if you're new to the channel, First off, welcome, but of course, if you like this video and would like to see more content like this, be sure to like and subscribe if you like more history content on your feed. Now, let's not waste any more time and jump right into this, shall we? Francois Duvalier, a medical doctor, ascended to the presidency of Haiti in 1957 after the instability caused by the presidency of Paul Magloire. The political landscape he inherited was marked by instability and Duvalier's initial years were shaped by promises of reform, social justice, and assistance to the black community. Known as Papa Doc, he quickly transitioned from a charismatic leader to an authoritarian figure. In 1964, Duvalier declared himself president for life, consolidating power through a combination of political maneuvering, suppression of opposition, and the creation of a paramilitary force known as the Tonton Makuts, relying on Papadoc's use of voodooism in his politics. As we delve into the genesis of his regime, it is essential to understand the factors that facilitated Duvalier's rise, poverty, a history of political instability, and a population yearning for stability, as well as equity, for the population as well. Yet, what unfolded under his rule was a departure from the democratic aspirations of the Haitian people. Duvalier's presidency was characterized by a ruthless authoritarianism that permeated every aspect of Haitian society. The Tonton Makuts, an unaccountable militia, became the enforcers of Duvalier's will after President Duvalier abolished the military carrying out acts of violence, intimidation, and political persecution. Under the pretext of defending the regime against supposed enemies, Duvalier silenced dissent, dismantled democratic institutions, and fostered a culture of fear. Economic policies during this period exacerbated the suffering of the Haitian people. Corruption was rampant with state resources funneled into the hands of the ruling elite. The majority of Haitians languished in poverty, while Duvalier and his associates amassed massive wealth. The myth of Papa Doc as a champion of the poor unraveled, revealing a leader whose legacy would be marked by a rule of fear and oppression. Duvalier's regime was characterized by an elaborate cult of personality. Portraits and statues of the leader were omnipresent, and allegiance to Papa Doc was not only expected but enforced. The practice of voodoo, deeply ingrained in Haitian culture, became entwined with Duvalier's regime. He strategically used elements of voodoo symbolism to legitimize his rule, presenting himself as a a voodoo priest with mystical powers, and even dressing as Baron Samdi, the god of the dead in in voodoo culture, further solidifying his image as an untouchable leader. The consolidation of power extended beyond politics and into the realms of education and culture. The regime manipulated historical narratives and controlled the education system to shape a narrative that justified Duvalier's authoritarian rule. Dissent was not only silenced, but erased from the collective memory of the nation. Francois Duvalier's death in 1971 did not bring an immediate end to the era of Duvalierism. His son, Jean-Claude Duvalier, succeeded him, perpetuating the autocratic rule until 1986, when he was overthrown. The legacy of Papa Doc lingered, casting a long shadow over Haiti's political landscape. The socio-economic scars inflicted during his presidency became enduring challenges for the nation. 
The Duvalier era left Haiti with a fractured political landscape, weakened institutions, and a populace scarred by decades of oppression. The suppression of dissent and the stifling of democratic values reverberated for generations, influencing subsequent leaders in the ongoing struggle for justice and development. As we conclude this exploration into the life and rule of Francois Duvalier, it's crucial to recognize the complexities of his legacy. Haiti, a nation with its rich cultural heritage and a resilient spirit, continues to navigate the intricate path towards stability, grappling with the enduring impact of a leader who wielded power through fear and authoritarianism. Thank you for joining us on this comprehensive journey through the life and rule of Francois de Beaulieu. As we continue to unravel the layers of Haiti's history, stay tuned for more in-depth explorations into the stories that have shaped this vibrant and resilient nation, among others. If you like content like this, be sure to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. And if you want to be the first to see Fun with Flags and History content on your feed, be sure to click the notification bell to be the first to be notified. And if you want to check us out on social media, we're available on Facebook as well as TikTok. This is, of course, Frank with Fun with Flags and History, signing off and have yourselves a great day.